Good morning, everyone. I'm Jia Yuang from Harbin Medical University. Today, I'd like to give a presentation about the language of medicine in media. And my topic is how healthcare professionals should make their voice in social media. We all know that social media has grown exponentially, and in the last few years. There has been an increasing use among medical doctors and students. There is an intense debate about the complexities of ensuring medical professionalism in the digital age. Based on this, my presentation will be started into two aspects: COVID-19 and proposals. Before we discuss some practical recommendations to healthcare professionals, let's read this news. Recently, COVID-19 has attracted more and more attention from other countries. It also makes people realize that China, as the first country on the front line of prevention and control, has been taking the most comprehensive. And strict methods to establish the first line of defense to against the international spread of disease. In its fight against virus, one doctor attracts people's attention. His name is Li Wenliang, an ophthalmologist who worked in Wuhan City Second Hospital. The reason why he attracts people's attention. Is that he is one of the eight doctors who firstly spread the message about COVID-19 through their private accounts of social media on December 13, 2019. The content of his message is that a mysterious new viral infection in Wuhan had the possibility of growing out of control. On January 1st this year, the Wuhan Public Security Organ punished these eight publishers. On February 7th, 2020, he sacrificed his life on the front line of treatment owing to the infection of COVID-19. Once his deeds were reported, people fell unfair to Li Wenliang and praised him as a whistleblower of Wuhan. On March 5th, he was awarded Advanced Individual by Chinese government. As a medical student, I'm so sorry to hear about his sacrifice. He's our hero who insists on fulfilling the responsibility to save patients as a doctor. At the same time, we need to intellectually analyze. Whether his way of issuing the warning to the public is appropriate, instead of just blinding the government's behaviors. Generally, the behavior of Dr. Li influenced our society deeply, to positive one, because of his warning. Some of his classmates began to do protection from then on. They began to store N95 masks and began to wear protective clothing at work. Since at that time, there were few people who knew about it, so masks were easy to buy. These masks protected some doctors at the beginning of the pandemic and relieved them from the urgent need in case of material shortage later. Simultaneously. We cannot deny that the pandemic warning caused a panic, more or less. Also, since he is not a respiratory specialist, the professionalism of the message cannot be ensured. From my perspective, the original intention of Dr. Li is kind. He wanted his relatives and friends to take care of themselves. He wanted them to keep a good physical protection of themselves, but the way he chose is not thoughtful enough. 
the better way to protect local citizens' life and health is reporting the situation to supervisors. Instead of giving opinions and sharing information in social media directly, still, from the national level, Chinese epidemic prevention and control system is still needed to be improved. Back to our topic today: social media. There are various advantages of social media, such as. Reaching an extensive audience, low cost, prompt communication, and easy updating, but there are risks in relation with misinformation and maintaining patient privacy. It's not an easy task to separate personal and professional boundaries, but it's very important to be transparent and to establish clearly the objectives and the use of the services. We engaged in social media as a professional. It seems that it's a time to prompt a wide reflection and consider the ethical and policy issues that may affect the current and future healthcare professionals' behaviors. Here, ten points of general practices when using social networking websites are proposed. Number one. Consider different aspects to guarantee patients, general public, and colleagues safer, legal, and ethical utilization. The use of social media for professional purposes opens new ways to communicate with patients, general public, and colleagues. But it's necessary to consider different aspects to guarantee their safer, legal, and ethical utilization. Number two, use conservative privacy settings in social media platforms. Be aware that not all information can be protected on the web, and how easily accessible it is. Number three, maintain standards of patient privacy and confidentiality. Be sure that any patient cannot be identified by the combination or sum of information posted online. Likewise, respect information and content copyrights. Number four, remember that what is online is probably long-lasting, so be careful about what you say and how you say it. Number five. It's not recommendable to give any kind of medical advice in social networks. When using social media platforms for services such as general health information or education, please explain the objectives, features of usage, and limitations clearly. Also, remember to include in, in electronic health records. Any kind of interaction with your patients using social media. Number six, medical doctors should not be friends with everyone in social media, and in general, it's prudent not to become an electronic friend of a current or former patient. Consider separate, clearly personal and professional content online. Number seven. Follow the guidelines of your health organization or company on using social media. If they are not established yet, seriously suggest its implementation as soon as possible. Consider it as one more service. Number eight. Clarify when you are speaking on behalf of your company or institution. If it's not the case. Clearly state that you are making personal remarks. Number nine, if you are identified as a medical doctor, any statement must especially reflect good standards of conduct and professional behavior. The last one, number ten, any form of inappropriate online behavior can potentially harm doctor-patient or colleague relationships. Be careful with comments made about colleagues and even health.
departments. Maintain good and respectful manners. The above is my opinions of the language of medicine in media. Thanks for listening.